Hello and welcome to uh, a lecture with Melissa Schaefer. She is a Sony ambassador. Uh, she lives in the Arctic and does a lot of cool projects. Um, shoots uh, a lot with the, the polar bears. Um, so with that, I give the word over to uh, Melissa. Blev han tyst? Ja. Okej. All right. Yeah, we go. Yeah. So we're so happy that you're here with us today. Thank you. My name is Melissa Shifa, and I'm here today with my partner, Frederick, to talk about our work in the Arctic. We will answer questions after this, but feel free to write them in the comments during our talk. Uh, Melissa will do most of the talking today. Uh, she is the photographer and I'm the guy next to her, you could say. Uh, my name is Fredrik Granath. I come from Stockholm, Sweden, and I have worked with the production of photography and film in the Arctic for the last 20 years. Uh, mostly on my own projects like books, but also for others like the National Geographic. And I come from Hamburg in Germany, but now I'm living in Sweden. I work as a photographer on Svalbard now since six years. My love for the polar bear and the Arctic started when I was very young. My dad gave me this little hand puppet and used to wake me up with it every morning. I guess that was the beginning. I continued caring and loving through photography. And this is what I'm trying to do now. Make you feel something when you see my images. I want to tell a story and not any story, but the story of the polar bear and how we are connected with some of the coldest places on our planet. We live in a fast world. We live in a time where we also want to explore every part of it. And that always means that we will leave our footprint. We work with polar bears and we work with tourism on Svalbard. And the most important task is to be able to learn from nature and perhaps even learn something about ourselves. You need to realize that we will leave footprints the moment you walk into nature. You need to know where you have to take your own wishes and needs back and work together with and for nature. We see the beauty of it and we want to document it for the world. But your own desire for the perfect photo has to be the last thing. Just ask yourself why you do what you do. We want to save habitats. We want to learn about ecosystems and protect biological diversity. We want to document the natural life of the polar bear over time, and we want to tell its story. And for that, you need to respect nature and everything that comes and lives with it. We share this planet with so much life, 
so much beauty that wants nothing but living and being part of a natural world and part of an ecosystem that are in perfect balance until we step in and mess it up. So everything we do matters and affects not only ourselves, uh, but everyone and everything on this planet. Every ounce of ice, every drop of water, and every single life on this planet is connected. And this is the polar bear's land after all. And everything has to happen on its terms. No matter how much time we have spent on the ice, we are just visitors. One of the main questions we often get is how we're doing this. So Svalbard, where we work, is an archipelago that rises out of the ocean close to 80 degrees north, not very far from the North Pole. Svalbard consists of hundreds of islands, of which Spitsbergen is the biggest. 60% of the land area is covered by glacier ice. Between the, between the ice, dramatic rugged mountains reach for the sky. And between a few of those, we find the little town Longabeen. Every trip starts here. Longabeen is a very interesting town. The streets here have numbers instead of names and it only has one grocery store. It's also not allowed to die or give birth here. Months before we head out there, we begin the planning. We check the ice conditions and how they develop every day. And when we get closer to departure, we begin planning our route where we will go and when and how to get there. But no matter how well we plan an expedition, you never really know what will happen out there. You can come home from months in the field without one single good photograph. And sometimes magic happens every day. You never really know until you're out there. It's all about patience. Give nature time and sooner or later, a miracle will happen. So we sit down on our snowmobiles with big sleds behind, packed with all our equipment and supplies. When we leave civilization, we stay out there for days or weeks. Our work is as much our life as it is our work. The feeling out there is indescribable. Sometimes the silence on the pack ice is deafening. And when that silence is broken by four large paws that break the snow crust, you are filled by life. Meeting a new polar bear is always a new experience. Most likely the bear has never seen a human being before. And the first thing it needs to do is to decide who or what you are. If a bear shows any sign of aggression, we don't let it close, we back off. The same if a bear seems nervous or scared by our presence, which is very common for mothers with cubs, then we simply back off. The few dangerous encounters we've had have all been around the cabin, around the camp. That's where polar bear can use the element of surprise. And also when we haven't showered for a week or cooked food and go to the toilet, the cabin becomes a magnet for the bears. It can smell its way from kilometers away. All polar bears are different. Like us humans, they are individuals. Some are shy, some are curious, some even have a sense of humor. And of a thousand bears we meet, a few are aggressive. All encounters, all moments, and of course all bears are different. But together, the polar bear tells us a story, a story about all of us.
photography is not just about the image. It can connect us to the past. It can remind us of places and people we love, and it can bring us to places and times we can't go ourselves. Photography is also a language everyone understands. It is universal. But the true power of photography is perhaps how it can connect to the future. The camera can be an instrument for change, how people think and see the world. We can make them see what we see without any words. Nature photographers capture the moment that most of us won't have a chance to see in our lifetimes. The incredible power of nature photography lies in its ability to remind us that we're not the only ones who call this planet home. And we have a responsibility to take care of it. On my first day of my first expedition, I met Helen almost six years ago. Every bear is different. We hope to get to know them a little bit over time. And it feels like I have known her, even when we just spent one day with her. She approached us from a far distance. Like most bears do, they never really look at you. They don't let you know how interested they are in you until they're very close. After a while, she had arrived at this beautiful iceberg just a hundred meters away from us. She walked behind it and around it. She was playing in the snow and taking a little nap on the side. She was not stressed at all from us watching, but she was as much interested in us than we were in her. Every few minutes, she had her nose up in the air against the wind to find out who or what we are. I cannot really put words to what I felt in that moment. It was the most amazing and exciting moment of my life. I was afraid, I was insecure, I was shivering and freezing and I couldn't feel my toes anymore. But nothing of that mattered. I was happier than ever before. Every movement from her was like a drug. I just forgot everything around me while looking at her. And the moment she looked at me, I stopped breathing. One year later, we came back to the same place and met this beautiful mother with cubs. We choose to believe that it was Helen again. Meeting a mother with cubs is very special. A bear mother is very protective of her small ones and would do anything to keep them safe. They just came out of the den and were about four months old. Polar bear cubs learn to hunt by watching their mother. They stay with their mother for two years. And in this time, they must learn how to become the perfect hunter. While playing with each other, and watching their mom copying all her moves, they learn how to survive. So we had to be extra careful not to disturb them. This is an important time. But you can't watch them without a big smile on your face because the cubs are so free and playful at that age while the mother is on a desperate hunt for food. Traveling out there on our own is what we love the most when we can sit down and just breathe it all in, wait for the miracles to happen. But since a couple of years back, we also shot a ship called Freya for a few expeditions every spring. Here on this photo, we went up to a place called Fjordan. After a long drive with our zodiacs, some people got cold. So they went back to the big boat. I stayed, which is uncommon, because I'm the one who is normally cold first. But the light was so magical that evening, and it just dragged me out there again. I was sitting with our friend and driver in the Zodiac, watching the sun go down and the mountains reflecting on the ocean. We didn't look for wildlife at that point. 
We just wanted to take it all in, to enjoy the moment. But I was happy that I took my camera with me because all of a sudden a virus decided to bump into us. I was pretty scared that he would maybe try to jump into our zodiac like it's an ice floe. Thankfully, he didn't. Seeing wildlife, you cannot plan. You can try as good as possible, but it will always surprise you. Another moment special to me was down in Hunsund a couple of years ago. There I learned an important lesson. When a bear walks normal speed, it is as fast as you when you run as fast as you can. So when it starts running, it's as fast as you driving a car. These bears don't look like it, but it's actually a mother with two year old cubs. Like I said, cubs stay around for two years with their mom. So these ones could leave her any day. We first saw them as little dots kilometers away. So we thought we would have some time to go on the ice and take some landscape photos. But as the bridge was down, the captain called us up again with the words, three bears are running towards you. Up on the boat again, just a minute later, the bears were already close to us. Again, a moment I will never forget. When they all looked at us at the same time and then walked past the boat just to play along the ice edge, like our big boat is not there at all. Very often we talk about being close to nature and the animals. By close, we don't mean distance and meters, but that we get to know them. In this case, it was close in meters. We went out with our ship and we saw a bear coming up to us. I never expected him to come that close to the boat. I had my long lens and I just started shooting. Distance is very difficult to measure when you look all the time through your camera. And at one point I could get the whole bear in the photo. I was so afraid he would leave when I take the camera down. So I just continued shooting. A few minutes later, I only saw his nose or eye like on this photo. And in that moment, Freddy came from behind me and told me to put the camera down. I was confused. I think I never heard him say that, but I did it and I looked down and the bear looked straight at me. He was so much closer than I expected it and my heart felt like it jumped out of my chest. It felt like I could put my arm down and touch him. It felt like he looked right into me and me into him. It was that kind of experience you cannot put words to. And after you walk away, we fell into tears. We were so stunned by that experience and I still get goosebumps when I think about it. The climate crisis is something everyone talks about, but not everyone feels connected to, even when we are all connected. Like Frederick always says, we only care for what we love. And this is our goal. Make you feel, love, and protect the polar bear, the Arctic, and our planet. Through the eyes of the polar bear and our personal stories with them. As the sea ice of the Arctic retreats and the territory of the polar bear becomes open water, its home and its possibilities to thrive and survive melts away. By looking at what happened with the polar bear, we see our own future. Climate change is real. It is a fact. And the polar bear can show in a very clear way what we're doing with our planet and how we are shaping our future. The Arctic sea ice coverage in summer has shrunk by half the years and its volume by a brutal 75%. The old, thick ice is gone. And not only is this disastrous for the polar bear, but for all of us, because what happened in the Arctic 
does not stay in the Arctic. The ice of the north plays a very important role regulating our global climate. Our two poles work as our our two poles work as our planet's air conditioner. So when they shrink, not only does the warming accelerate, but our climate becomes more unstable and also unpredictable. And no one can hide from a climate in chaos. This is the most serious challenge humanity has ever faced. The greatest threat to the future of life on our planet is not politicians with short-sighted agendas or money-hungry big corporations. It is indifference. It is easy to say that we don't have the power and that what we do as individuals doesn't make much of a difference. Nothing could be farther from the truth. It doesn't matter if your part is big or small. It is equally important because everything is connected. Every ounce of ice, every drop of water, and every single life on this planet is connected. That is what we need to understand. All our actions have consequences, not only for ourselves, but for life far, far away. So um, I thought uh, I was going to rewind time a little bit by telling a story from, from a few years ago. And this one can also uh, be found in our recent book, uh, which is titled Polar Tales. Uh, let's go to Kungsöya, the small island part of Kungkos land far to the east in Svalbard. Uh, Kungsöya has been considered one of the three crown jewels in the entire Arctic, together with Wrangel Island in Russia and Western Hudson Bay in Canada. It's been where most polar bear mothers have been building dens to give birth to cubs. Um, and this was a few years ago before Melissa and I met, uh, and I was on Kungsöya to document mothers who came out of their dens with. Uh, newborn cubs. As I was returning to base camp, <clears throat> an old trapper's cabin, I saw the most beautiful sunset over the frozen ocean. In midwinter, after months of polar night, the days quickly become longer. And during the last evenings before the midnight sun, the hours when the sun goes down and hits the horizon are probably the most beautiful. The sea ice and the sky turn into the most insane colors, red, yellow, orange. Sometimes you have to pinch yourself to check uh, if, it's, if it's real or not. But I got closer to the cabin and I heard roaring, panting, growling. The silhouettes of two large male polar bears appeared against the setting sun. They were standing on their back feet, wrestling. One bear would punch the other and then back off. And then they would sit just staring at each other, only to get right back at it again. And on the sideline, perhaps 50 meters away, was their audience. A beautiful young female was sitting still, watching them and the sunset. The two males were fighting over her, the grand prize. And the fight continued. <clears throat> As the sun began to rise, it became clear that we had a winner. One of the bears became more and more defensive, and after a final roaring attack, he just stayed down. The female bear, uh, she left her spectator seat and walked away with the winning male following close behind. And when I uh, came out of my cabin the next morning, the defeated bear was still laying there uh, a couple of hundred meters away still in the same position. Was he dead? 
I had to walk closer to check. But he raised his head. Um, his spirit, his masculinity, his, his manhood had been crushed. But physically, he seemed fine. Uh, it's not uh, uncommon for male bears to fight over females, but it rarely gets too bloody. Uh, polar bears are too smart for that. Even though they would be able to kill each other in seconds, instead, uh, they fight kind of like dogs do. It's about showing who is the biggest, the baddest, and, and the most masculine. It's about dominance. And during the, the next couple of weeks, uh, I bumped into this loving couple, the bear who won the fight and his female. Uh, I bumped into them a, a number of times. They played like puppies chasing each other across the small island and the sea ice uh, surrounding it. He would play hard to get, and he would run after her. But as soon as he got too far behind, she would stop and let him catch up. It was fun to watch. They were completely focused on each other and barely noticed me, even when I was close. Um, except for one time. <clears throat> I was at the, at the bottom of a valley in the, in the middle of the island, and I suddenly heard the two bears coming, running over the top of a high hill uh, right above me. And the female bear, bear, she appeared first. She looked down, immediately spotted me, and stopped. But the male bear who came after her, he didn't see me, and he continued over the high peak in high speed, running like there was no tomorrow. And he rushed down the steep hill straight towards me. So I fired a warning shot in the air to, to get his attention. Um, and he finally saw me, but his speed was too high and the slope seemed way too steep to be able to stop in time. So he sat down on his butt and I stopping with his front paws deep in the snow. But it was steep and he was sliding so fast. I was sure he would crash straight into me. And he looked just as terrified as me when he glided closer and closer. But only a few meters away, he finally managed to stop. Um, and he sat down and he looked me straight in the eye. He was closer than I would ever allow a bear, but I took the deepest breath I have ever taken and lowered my gun. Uh, because we were both thinking the same thing. Then he stood up and slowly cl climbed back up the hill, back to his girl. And the following week, I had the privilege of witnessing these two bears mating in the sunshine on a hillside next to the ocean. And six months later, in the darkest of fall, this female would hopefully return to that same hillside to build a den and give birth to her cubs. And that is what it's all about. The moment when she returns to that island to give birth to new life. That moment, in many ways, is key to all our future. And the question now is not how we feel about all of this. The question, of course, is what we do. Because words like these, they are just words. And me and Melissa, uh, we don't view ourselves as very important, but the message that we have from the polar bear is important. It is about ice, it is about life, it is about all of us. But more than anything, it's about love. Love for each other, love for this planet, and all the beautiful life that we share it with.
Thank you. I guess. That's it. And now um, we could uh, take some questions. Maybe if, you... if someone is there. If someone is there. <laughs> Uh, for me, inspiration is 100% Paul Nicklin and Christina Mittermeier. <laughs> Maybe even a bit more Christina Mittermeier. <laughs> uh, for you? Uh, inspiration, Mr. Paul Nicklin, uh, I would say in, in many ways is, uh, yeah, a hero, a good friend, a leader, the leader of the pack, I would say. <laughs> so. Paul Nicklin. And the scariest moment? Scariest moments uh, would have to be, uh, I don't know, we've had bears, you know, on, on the roof of, of, uh, of our cabins. I don't know, for me, maybe the first, actually my first encounter with a polar bear in the wild was, which was during my first winter expedition 200 years ago. Um, I lay down to sleep in the cabin and basically woke up. I was laying on top of a, of a bunk bed right below the ceiling and woke up by the ceiling actually almost hitting my face because there was a polar bear on the roof jumping, trying to crush it. Uh, there have been some moments like that. Uh, so. I'm Oh, um, I think we have like one or two spots. Yeah. So check our website, send us an email, and we'll see. But it's, it's basically sold out. But we have a couple of spots, I think. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Just. Uh... Thank you.